Hello everyone and thank you very much for watching. This is me Mr. P and this is another episode in the Proxmox home server series. In this video I will show you how you can self-host Proxmox backup server inside your Proxmox cluster, how to configure it and why you should use Proxmox backup server to backup VMs and Alexi containers. So let's begin. Before continuing with this video I want to show you what we're going to work with. I have a simple Proxmox cluster containing three nodes. Node 3 currently only self-hosts Ubuntu LXC container. Node 2 contains only Ubuntu server VM, minimal version. And Node 1 currently has nothing in it. And this is where we're going to store our Proxmox backup server. If you, run, if you only have Proxmox node, one single Proxmox node, to self-host Proxmox backup server inside the same node would be a silly way to do. Because what if the host dies, the one single node dies, the same way the, the, uh, it will take down the Proxmox backup server as well. So it's going to be much, much harder for you to retrieve all the VMs and LXC containers. Where with Proxmox cluster, I find it more safer way to do because Proxmox cluster will give you option for Proxmox high availability, which means that if node one crashes, Proxmox backup server will be automatically migrated to another running node and will carry on functioning while you're getting Proxmox node one sorted and put back online. So let's get this setup going. Inside the Proxmox official website, under download section, you will find option for Proxmox backup server. I'll click on that and choose ISO. The most recent version of a Proxmox backup server is 3.2-1 as of April 25th. So I'm gonna just right click on the option download and choose copy link. I'll go back to my Proxmox cluster, select any node and choose ISO. And inside ISO images, I'm just going to click on download from URL, paste that URL that I just took from the website, press the button query URL. It will provide the file name that it will be used. I'm happy with that and I'll click download. I'll get the error because I already downloaded this file. In your case, if this file is not um, exists inside the same location where you keep all your ISO files, it will start downloading. And this file is not big, it's just a couple of gigabytes or so. So let's double check. Here we go with 1.15 gigabytes in size. The one version before that was just 1.01. So I do have Proxmox backup server ISO file downloaded. So let's get starting setting up the Proxmox backup server on my node one. I will select node one and create, click create VM. Or I can select node one or two from this list down here. So node one is fine, 102 AD number is okay. I will name this PBS-YT, Proxmox Backup Server YouTube. Under OS, under ISO storage, I need to just type backup and will auto filter down to the files that matches the name and I'll choose 3.2-1. Inside the system, I will leave everything as it is, no changes, everything by default. Under disk, instead of 32, I can go and select 16. 16 gigabytes for Proxmox backup server still is an overkill, but it's going to take less space instead of just using 32 gigabytes. Everything else can stay as it is unless you will host this in a destination where it is SSD, so you can do SSD emulation and discard. Under CPU, minimum is two cores. Under memory, two gigabytes of RAM is fine, but I'd like to select the Boolean device and change this value to 1024 which means that this VM will have minimum option to use is one gig and a maximum is 2.2 uh, gigabytes. Under network, everything stays as it is. And under config will give me a list exactly what I just done, what kind of uh, options I selected, and I'll just press finish. From the logs, I can see that VM 102 has been created. So I can go select VM 102. Under console, I'm just gonna press start now. Proxmox backup server installation process is exactly the same as you would do when you're installing a Proxmox PVE. So I will select the option for graphical. Under end user license agreement, I'm just going to click agree. We'll make sure that the right disk is selected and click next. My country, time zone and keyboard layout has been detected correctly. So I'll just click next. I'll provide the password that I want to use to log into web GUI and I can add the email address. Once everything is done, I'm just gonna click next. Make sure the host name is selected correctly. I know that pbs.fritz.box is already in use, so I'm just gonna go and change that to say pbs-yt. The IP address that is auto-assigned is fine, 
a gateway and DNS server is okay. So everything is fine right now. I'm click next. Gives me a list exactly what's going to be done and I am okay to automatically reboot after successful installation and I'll press install. And right now just sit and wait for this installation to finish. Proxmox backup server installation process almost done. So while it will finish the last percent and do auto restart, I will go to a data center, look for HA option. Under resources, I will click add. And from a drop down list, I will select PBS-YT to add this virtual machine into a Proxmox high availability list. This way, uh, the Proxmox cluster or Proxmox high, high availability will make sure that VCDM is always running. And here we are, Proxmox backup server installation finished and it's restarted and I need to navigate to this address to access Web GUI. Please note that the port number ends with 8007 instead of 8006. This is the port we need to use. So if I enter this IP address followed by 8007, I will be presented with a potential risk. And this is because of cell certificate. So I'm just going to say advanced, accept the risk and continue. And now I need to enter username and a password to access web GUI of Proxmox backup server. Default username is root and a password is the one you chose during installation process. Click login. Yeah, I'm happy to save the password and accept this. And here we are, we are inside the Proxmox backup server web GUI. Before we go and configure anything, regardless if you downloaded the most recent version of a Proxmox backup server or not, you need to make sure that all the packages are up to date. First thing, I will navigate to administration option on the left hand side. And under repositories, I'll click on that. And I will disable the PBS enterprise repo. So we'll select that and click disable. Then I will click add accept and then choose no subscription and click add and next thing I need to go and click on updates and press press refresh yes I'm happy with that and right now Proxmos backup server will go and update all the packages this process took no time it actually took only three seconds so I'm gonna open that or close that sorry and here we go in total it will download a new 16 uh, packages needs to update upgraded so I'm just going to click upgrade and then press enter. All the backups are done so I can close that. Leave a page. Press refresh just to make sure that nothing will show up. And as you can see all the updates are done. Now that we know the system is up to date we need to go and start creating a data store. Data store is the locations where the Proxmox backup server will store the backups. You can point data store to uh, internal drives, to internal ZFS pool. In this video, I'll point to network attached storage SMB folder just to simplify this demo. I need to go to shell and amend or edit the file called fstab. To do that, I need to write nano space slash etc slash fstab. And in here, as you can see, I added the line which will mount the SMB share from my NAS into the Proxmos backup server. I will use this folder on the host to mount into this location inside the Proxmos backup server using Samba and then I provide the username and a password for the user. At the end no perm means no permissions will be exchanged and I add 00, 0 at the end of the defaults. Once you're done amending the file you need to press Ctrl X to close, Y to write and enter to confirm. Next thing I need to make sure that the folder that where the SMB share will be mounted exists. To do that, I need to go into the folder MNT and make sure that the folder called backups is created. I already created one before this video, but you need to make sure that destination where the mount will be mounted. You need to make sure that that exists before you run a command, which is mount A. This command will automatically run fstab file and do all the mounts. So mount A. Run that. It will tell you that you need to run systemctl daemon reload if fstab has been changed. So I'll do that now. Systemctl daemon reload. Once that is done, I can run mount a again. And no errors came up, so it means that the mount has happened. So if I navigate to backups, I should see something here from the previous demos. That is fine. So what we need to do next, in my in your case, the folder probably going to be empty. In my case, as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff from the previous videos. I can obviously go and delete all that, but I won't. I'm going to use a PBS folder. 
to make sure the PBS folder is empty, I'm actually create a new one for this video, PBS-YT, like that. So in this video, I mounted, or oh, so far I mounted the SMP folder into backups, and I will use this subfolder to store my backups. In your case, like I said, this folder can be empty. It's up to you how you set this up. So now I need to tell the data store that this is a folder where the backups will be stored. To do that, I need to click on a data store and then add data store. Give it a name. I will name this backups. And then I need to enter absolute path, which in my case is slash mnt slash backups slash pbs dash yt. The GC, which stands for garbage collection and prune is set as daily. That is fine. We will we will tweak them later. So I'm going to click add. Once I click add, data store will go and start creating chunks. The way that Proxmox backup server works is the backups are done in blocks. And then on the next run on the same VM backup, the Proxmox backup server will check if the chunks changed. If the block chunks or blocks of the VM hasn't changed, the backup will be super fast. And only the blocks that are changed will be replaced. This is where the Proxmox backup server shine as it's going to make backups happening much faster and the backup server stores backup in much, much more better storage efficient way. While it's creating these chunks, we can actually go and check how they look. I'll go back in a shell, navigate to mount backups PBS YT. And inside here, I should see a file folder, hidden folder called chunks. I'll navigate into this hidden folder. And if I list the content, which is going to take a while now, as you can see, it's created a bunch of folders inside here. And each of these folders represents a chunk. So when the Proxmox backup will go and start doing a backup, for example, these folders will contain your Windows VM. And if it's only 10, 39 chunk changed, these will be reused and only the first one will be replaced. So let's clean the screen and let's see if it's still creating under tasks at the top right. If I click on that, I can see something happening. Let's click. So right now it's still creating chunks. It's at 40%. So we'll leave this running. And when this is done, I should see a backups new data store showing up here on the left. Data store has been created, so I can close that. And now I can see the information about data store and the past 30 days history of the data store. So right now, next thing what we need to do is to create the user that will be used to do a backups. It's up to you. If you want to create a user or not, you can go and set up everything via root. But for a bit more secure way, I suggest to create a user. So we will click on our access control at the top here. Then choose user management. Make sure it's selected and click add. Username will be backup user. Realm is only one that is available, so we leave as it is, and I'll give a password, which is going to be a simple password. Obviously, you need to enter something more secure than just a password. So that's been added. I'll click Add. New user has been created. Now we need to give permissions to this user to access our data store. I'll click on a permissions, click Add, and add the user permissions, and the path will be data store slash backups. Which user? I'll choose backup user. And what role he will get for this data store? It's only going to be data store backup. That means that the user only allowed to do a backups, do not amend them and delete them. When everything is filled, I'm just going to click add. So user has been created. I have a data store created. I do have a user created. Next thing, what you can do, and it's up to you if you want to set this up or not. Under content, you have an option to set up NS which stands for namespace. Namespace, you can treat, treat that as a, as a tags. You can have a different namespaces for VMs or only VMs that another namespace will be only for containers. Another, another namespace will be only for the uh, hosts, for example. And what I mean by that, hosts, you can actually use Proxmox backup server to backup your Proxmox host, and you can backup another Linux Debian based Linux device. In my main Proxmox setup, um, main Proxmox backup server setup, I do have namespaces, so I'm just going to select and do the same thing here. So this is going to be namespaces called backups. And next namespace will be nodes. And if you start setting up namespaces in a, and start grouping the backups in a different way, depending on the namespaces, the prune and garbage collection can be set up in much more granular way and depends on how you set up. 
this will be more like you you can set up the prune in uh, depending on a namespace that's what i'm trying to say for example you want to keep nodes nodes backup for seven days where just the normal backups you want to keep on a three days cycle so in the prune section you can select which one is which or how to uh, man how to manage them i'll show you all that in a second first thing we need to link proxmox backup server into their proxmox cluster so that is selected everything is sorted let's click on a proxmox cluster and under data center here at the top i should find option for storage i will click on that and say add the storage one of the options will say proxmox backup server i'll select that and then i need to enter the id i'll call these backups server enter the ip address of your backup server user will be backup user at pbs you need to select at pbs if you select if you created the user the hint is here at the top as you can see it says root at pam if i'm selecting the root but if i go to users under realm as you can see it says pbs and the proximal backup authentication server will be, was selected during user creation process that's why you need to select pbs if you're creating a user or you're planning to use a user and pam if you planning to use the root access I'm going to use the user next the password was just the password on the right hand side data store name in my case it says backups I will call this backups namespace it says root but my name mine will be backups because I want to not drop all the backups into the main root storage of the namespaces I want to go inside the backups and next we need to provide the fingerprint fingerprint is a unique uh, let's say token that will make sure that proxmox connects to a correct data store so under data store i'll cl I click on a backups under summary show connection information and fingerprint i'm just going to click copy on this button Close that paste that token and click add and everything is added correctly I should see a backup option showing up here under all my nodes inside my Proxmox cluster. So the backups has been set up. That's it. All the nodes detected that this is the storage for the backups. As you can see in the backups options, right now we have nothing is empty. So let's go and back something up. I'll start with the Linux uh, VM, Ubuntu Server VM, as it is the biggest one out of two. This is a 10 gigabyte in size VM. If I click on a hardware, as you can see, it's using 10 gigabyte size hard drive. So I'll select this VM, I'll click Backup, and then I'll click Backup Now. Make sure the storage is selected correctly, everything is OK, press Backup. So while this is doing here, we can quickly jump into this PBS under Content. If I open Backups, I can see VM100 showed up. I can expand that and expand a bit more, and I can see what files are getting backed up. If I go back to my Proxmox, I can see a bit more information on the logs on what's happening. Please note in here, it says dirty bitmap status, create new. What that means is that this VM is being backed up for the very first time. In other words, it means that the Proxmox cluster sending this VM to Proxmox backup server and Proxmox backup server checks if this VM has been backed up before. If it's not, it's creating the dirty bitmap which means it's mapping your VM into blocks, into these chunks that I was explaining earlier. So when this, is, this backup is done, it will know which chunk has been pushed into which folder. And on the following backup, it will compare the chunks. And if something's changed, it will back up only that that is changed. And you will see in a minute what exactly that looks like in the real world. World as This will probably will take about three, three, four minutes to back up, where the next one, will take seconds to back up. So I'll leave that running. I'll go back into my Proxmox cluster and I'll select LXC container, create a backup and do the same backup on LXC container. Press backup. LXC container is backing up in slightly different way inside the Proxmox in general, not only with the Proxmox backup server, as in LXC container, you will not get the percentage uh, logs exactly where it is. It just tells you, here we go, I'm backing up and you just sit and wait until I'm done. The way the Proxmox backup server controls VMs and LXC containers is, is a different way as well. If I reload this page, let's see if it's going to show up here under my backups. I know it's still, it's still 
trying to get this in. So I'll wait, I'll give a couple of minutes or so for VM and Alexi container to be backed up. From the Proxmox logs, I can see that VM 101 and VM 100 has been backed up. So I can close that. Let's click on, for example, 100. And I can see backup is showing up here. And if I click on a 101, backup is showing here. As I mentioned, Proxmox backup server backs up the VMs and Alexi container slightly different way. So I'm just going to refresh that to make sure everything is added. So 100 is the VM and 101 is Alexi container. Under 100, I can see there is a four files created and I can download all these files if I want to, to store locally. And this is 10 gigabytes here. This one represents the disk image. Where LXC containers, I can download all of it. And what I can do extra, I actually can go and file browse the LXC container. What if I, instead of restoring everything, I just need to retrieve one file that was in the backup from two, three days ago. I can go into that specific folder. For example, in this case, I will go to etc folder, look for fstab file, and I click download and the file is getting downloaded. This is the difference between LXC containers and VMs inside Proxmox backup server. VMs getting backed up in the blocks, in the, in the files. Where LXC container, they are backing up, they're getting backed up in the files, but with LXC containers, you can actually go and drill down through a folder structure to retrieve a specific file instead of going and getting that one, that the entire file be restored. You're just going and fetching one file you want. So that is backed up. Let's check how it took, uh, how it looks like from a backup Proxmox cluster side. So let's open this up and let's find 100, double click. So I can see that backup is started. It's created a new uh, dirty bitmaps. An entire backup took about, where is it? Uh, 132 seconds. So just over two minutes the VM has been backed up. What if I want to back up this VM again? Let's click backup and say backup now. So right now it's going and saying, wait a minute, dirty map status, okay, I found it that this VM already exists in my system and only was changed is eight megabytes. Some files inside this VM got updated and etc. So it went and updated uh, the block the chunk of this VM inside Proxmox backup server where this part of the data was stored. As you can see, all that happened in one second. And this is where Proxmox backup server shines as it just backs up exactly what's changed. So let's run again. Actually, what I'll do, let's go inside this VM. And inside this VM, I will install the simple thing, which is apt install htop. Is a htop installed? Let's double check. No, it's not installed. So I'm installing htop, which is just a couple of hundred kilobytes in size htop is installed. So now I can run htop, which will give me the uh, inside the terminal the inf information about the VM. Let's wait for that to start. Here we go. So this is running. This is a new thing I just installed into this VM. Now I'll go back into backups and run the backup again. So it runs and says, OK, do it a bitmap status. OK, 52 megabytes is a new thing that is being added. So I'm just going to go in the backup only 52 megabytes, which is took again in one second as a connection between this, this node and uh, the uh, NAS is a one gigabit. So it took just a second to get this up. So right now I have three backups of this VM, but the second and third backed up only the stuff has been changed. Now inside the Proxmox backup server, if I refresh, I have another two extra showing up here for each of the VMs. Now we can go and start setting up the backup for the node. If I go to a Proxmox cluster under nodes, I'll select node one inside the shell. I will open the file which I created previously and I call this node-backup.sh. And this is just a simple bash script which will run a command Proxmox backup client instruction backup to backup this node. I created this script to automatically generate PXAR file. This is the file that is being used for Proxmox backup server to store the backup. So instructing this and saying, okay, you need Proxmox backup client backup into this file, which is PXAR file, everything inside this location and under, like all the subfolders. So I'm just put slash means is a root directory. Repository represents where the backup needs to be pushed. So backup Proxmox cluster, you need to backup this file into this location using user, which in my case is going to be backup user with a realm PBS. This is a server where it needs to go. So uh, dollar sign server is going to be the IP address 
which is this is my Proxmox backup server IP address. And then what I need to go, let me quickly jump here. And I want you to go and backup into data store and then space dash dash ns means net, 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 net namespaces. And namespace is going to be, in my case, is nodes. So we'll go and double check if it's definitely nodes. Let's go one up here, as you can see, nodes. So this is a simple script which automatically will detect host name, will back up the, into a file pxar, hostname p, dot pxa, hostname dot pxar file. Oh, struggling to say that. Username, location, user, data store, and etc. And pbs underscore password, uh, Proxmox, Proxmox backup server client will look for this variable. And my, in my case, password is password. You can do all that using tokens. If you go to access control, API token, and you can create a new token for this user. In my case, let's say it's going to be PBS user token name. You can go to do all this using tokens. So all that is done. I'll press Control X to close. I have no changes done to this file, so it's not asking me to save it. Now I can run bash node.node-backup.sh. It will ask me, is this fingerprint is correct? This is basically just goes and checks if a data store fingerprint matches this. I'm going to say yes. And to make sure that you definitely meant saying yes, it's going to ask you again. And then press Y and run. Not sure why it's decided to close on the first attempt, but I just rerun the file again. And it's right now going and uploading directory. So right now, Proxmox backup server client backing up my host, which is pve node one into Proxmox backup server. If I click on this and under data store, I will do reload. Then navigate into nodes. I can see host slash pve dash node dash one showing up. I click on that. The backup is in progress. So let's wait for backup to finish. Please note that Proxmox backup server client will automatically skip the uh, some folders by default, mainly the all the dev, sys, run, and proc, and everything was inside them MNT. The Proxmox backup server will ignore mounted folders. So I'll just leave that running. It will take just a couple of seconds or so as a Proxmox, back, Proxmox host install takes just a couple of, a couple of gigabytes. I think it's four or five gigabytes in total Proxmox host uh, as a storage. Uh, so it's just going to run in no time. It should take less than two minutes. So I'll wait for this to finish. Actually, while it's doing this backup, we can go and start setting up the prune job and a garbage collection job. Inside the data store under backups, I have an option to select prune and GC jobs. Click on that. Under prune jobs, you can select how long the backups can, can needs to be kept before they auto delete. So under namespaces, for example, everything that's inside a backups folder or inside a backups namespace, I want to keep the last two backups. And that needs to be done, let's say at 3 a.m. Let's add that. But with the namespaces for nodes, I want to keep that, I would say, a bit longer. Let's say I want to keep the last five of them. And that needs to be done at 4 a.m. Here we go. So what this is going to do, oh yeah, the root one, I'm just going to delete. I don't want the prune job to happen on the root uh, root structure inside the content. I don't want the root a prune just to go and go over all of them. So right now, how I set up this is that the prune job will go and check the backups namespace and at 3 a.m., it will make sure that the, only the most recent two are remaining. Inside the node section, only the last five are remaining. With the garbage collection, I can go and select that, which will be done, let's say, at 7 a.m. And next thing, what I suggest for you to do is select a verify job. This will make sure that all the backups are not corrupted, everything is backed up properly. And I'll select that to be done, not daily, but at 5 a.m. And then all the namespaces, that's fine. It will automatically skip verified if it detects. So all namespaces are fine. And the max depth is fine as well. I'll click add. So how everything is right now should function or how I set up everything to function. Inside a Proxmox cluster under data center, I will choose backups to be done every night. So let's say select this and do 0000, zero, zero, zero. every midnight except PBS. I want everything to back up except PBS-YT VM because when you're backing up the Proxmox backup server VM into itself, it will create a lot of a lot of bad things. You don't you don't need to do that. 
I suggest not to do that. And that's it, retentions. I cannot do anything here because we're using backup user, which backs up into a Proxmox backup server. So backup user has no option to delete them. All the deletion, all the cleanup and everything will be done inside Proxmox backup server. So this we're just gonna leave as it is. And we'll click create. And next, I want to go and let's say at 1 a.m. I want backup to go of all the nodes into NAS. NAS is a simple old-fashioned way for Proxmox to backup, only PBS. And click done. So how all this will function? At midnight, the Proxmox backup server will backup entire cluster into the chunks, into the Proxmox backup server, into here at, at midnight. At 1 a.m., the Proxmox cluster will back up the, my VM, Proxmox backup server VM, into a simple NAS for much simpler way to restore. Next thing was going to happen, the prune job will run at 3 a.m. to check if a backup's namespace only contains the most two most recent backups and everything else will be deleted. Hour later, it's going to happen the same thing with the nodes, the nodes um, namespace. Then, once that is done, at 5 a.m., hour after all the pruning is done, the verify job will go and check if all the backups are verified, everything looks okay. And once that is done, the garbage man will come in, the garbage collection will come in and clean everything what it doesn't need to have, doesn't need to be there. So now what we can do is go into a prune and let's say under content, sorry, let's see how I'm doing with the backups. I think VMs, I have three VMs here running or three different backups for that VM. So in the prune job, I can select that and just run now instead of waiting for midnight. So prune job goes and says, okay, I need to go into namespace backups and make sure that the last two are remaining. Went through there and deleted everything. Let's go back under content. Let's reload. And now are two remaining, which is great. Next thing I can go and just run manually verify job. I'm doing all the automated process in that order right now manually instead of waiting for midnight to and then do all this automatically. So this is right now verify job went. It found three different groups and is going and checking if all the backups are correct, not corrupted, no errors. As you can see here, everything is shiny. So let's wait for this to finish. Verify job has finished. So let's check how it went under backups. If I click on that or backups namespace, let's open VMs and CT. As you can see, they're all green tick. It means all the VM is back. All the VM has been, all be, sorry. All the VM and LXC container backups are checked. No corruptions happening, happened. And the nodes is not verified yet as it was still backing up during verification process. We can go and click verify job and run the verify again. And this time it will go and check for verification. And as you can see, a lot of skipped recently verified and right now only verifying one one the um, one backup which is pve node one so let's go back into a content and let's see once that's get verified under task i can see it's still running and it's been running for 19 seconds and so so let's wait for this to finish and verify all that all backups are correct and no problems are happened with the backups verification job completed so under nodes i can see that node backup for pve one is passed and all the backups and the past mark next to the backups. Last task was going to happen with a cron automated task during night is a garbage garbage collection. So select that and click run now. And now it's going and checking all the chunks that leftover chunks and everything after the prune job, the backups of both namespaces, the prune job and verification job. Sweep and use chunks. As you can see, it's found, it's detected and right now it's deleting 33 out of them. So this will take, as you can see, is slowly progressing, depending how many VMs you backing up, how, how often you do this, the uh, amount of chunks it needs to go and delete, it will change. In my main Proxmox um, setup, it takes about up to a couple of thousands of them needs to be processed. So I'll leave that running. Actually, while it's running, please note under data store, as you can see, the duplication factor is still one. There's a bunch of red showing up here as I was messing around doing this video shoot, just canceling something, uh, uh, starting, canceling, starting. As you can see, this will show you exactly what's happened in the past 30 days. So garbage collection is still in progress. Let's see how, how his, uh, the garbage collection progress. 
So if right now done 4,000 of them or 400 sort of them and it's a 16%. So I'll wait for this to finish and we will see that the deduplication factor number changes. The garbage collection has finished and I can see on disk usage, chunks and all the information showing up here. So if I close that, as you can see, the duplication factor from 1 changed to 6.3. Using Proxmox backup server, I saved the storage by 6.3x. And this is the amazing thing of the Proxmox backup server. It saves space and it makes backup much faster. Quick thing to note about Proxmox backup server, if you want to go and dive deep a bit more into this, you can, usually, you can use uh, the tapes to make a backups using Proxmox backup server, which is uh, there is a bunch of tutorials online for you to do and uh, go and set it up as I don't own the tape backup um, device I I'm not going to show you this in this video as I, I have I'm not familiar enough to get, provide you a demo how to get all this running but in a nutshell that is it the uh, the Proxmox backup server right now is being going to run inside this cluster backup all three nodes using the script by the way the script that I showed you you can put this on a cron job inside the Proxmox host and this will run uh, on, depending on a cron as a backup, uh, as, a, as a task and it will backup this and it will send this into this Proxmox backup server. Actually, if I'm going to close that and say bash node, I'll backup the node again. Let's see how fast that's going to happen. And that's it. Proxmox backup server runs overnight. It backs up automatically all the VMs LXC containers. It makes sure that it keeps, keeps the right amount of VMs depending how you set up uh, for you to restore back. LXC containers, you can browse the content if you want to retrieve a specific file instead of going and backing up entire VM, entire LXC container. VMs only backed up in the, in the big files, in the big blocks. So if you want to retrieve this IMG file of this VM and maybe self-host somewhere else, you just download this file and you're good to go. The prune job will make sure that backups the only two remain two last ones remaining and on the nose is five and garbage collection will go and do the thing and just make sure that everything is backed up and um, everything is clean and sorted i'm probably just going to leave this running because you already you already know how all this is functions the script that i'm using for this you'll find in my git repo i'll leave a link in the description below for you to go and copy and paste inside inside your system if you want to go and start backing up the nodes and as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, self-hosting Proxmox backup server inside a single node is not the wise way to do. As if a host dies, obviously Proxmox backup server will die with it. But if you run Proxmox clusters, I do, running Proxmox backup server as a VM inside a cluster is much safer way as a Proxmox high availability will make sure that this Proxmox backup server VM will function if the node dies. Obviously, if like electricity completely goes offline in your building, yes, yeah, that's, uh, that's everything will go offline. But when you have a Proxmox cluster, Proxmox backup server host inside a cluster is much safer way as just running inside the uh, inside a single node. But if, for example, you have a single Proxmox node and you have something like Raspberry Pi, there is a there is a script. I will leave a link in the description below to a Git repo. There is a script where you can go and set up the Proxmox backup server inside the Raspberry Pi, and then Raspberry Pi will be your your node where the backups will be sent to. Here we go. Backups finished. So what we can see from here, so it went and backed up only 69 megabytes. Nice uh, into this. So if I go back to Proxmox, data store content reload. From a drop down i can choose nodes and let's see this and i have node backed up and node backed up plus by the way with the nodes i can go and browse the files as well same as lxc containers so in here let's say i need to go into where is this file or folder etc let's find this fs tab and i can go and download this file for later use here we go download it i downloaded fs tab file i can go and make this sure that i have a copy that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this lengthy video about Proxmox Backup Server how and how to self-host, how to configure, and why you should uh, use one. I've been using a standard Proxmox Backups for since I discovered what the Proxmox Backup, what the Proxmox Hypervisor is. So I've been using standard Proxmox Backups for at least three years. But right now, it's mainly Proxmox Backup Server runs, and I've been using for two and a half, nearly three months to back up entire pro my main Proxmox cluster, my Linux laptop, and a couple of Raspberry Pis all getting backed up into one central location, into a, into a NAS running RAID, 
into a NAS and it just keeps there and it's saving on storage and the backups are much much faster. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think I already said that. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.